कार्तिकीय कार्तिक क्या हमारे गॉड में है कौन से है कार्तिक क्या सर लॉर्ड शिवा You come from our key. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. What is our key famous for? Sir, key has many cement plants, not in the town itself, but in the nearby areas like Dada Ghat. So it has cement factories, and it is famous for Sir Lutu Temple and Mutu Temple of Lord Shiva. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. These are the two main things. Not at all. Dada Ghat, who Dada Ghat and Bermana was much in use. Yes, sir. In recent times, <coughs> what was the problem there? Why the you uh, know factories had to be uh, I mean stopped? Actually, the sir, the plants are owned by Adani, and by that time, the Adani had stopped the mm-hmm. uh, supplying uh, cement from there. There were sir some demands by truck unions to raise the fees of their competition, but Adani was not willing to do that. So the factories had to stop, and the truckers were protesting. So that's why it was in news. Mm-hmm. So finally, sir, it was resolved by actions of. I know it was sudden, you know. The things were going on for the last many years. Yes, sir. But I think Adani took it over um, only two years before, or one year before. Yes, one or two years before. One or two years before. The yes, problem, um, you know, suddenly spurt had a spurt. Uh, doesn't matter. And now it is settled. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. There was one more cement uh, plant in your area, other than the Alagat. What was it? What is it? I think it's JP. It's JP. JP. Plana. What is it known as? Why? Well, what's the actual place? Sir, I'm not able to remember the place. It's on the hill top, sir. Baga, Baga, something. Baga is or something. So I'm not able to remember. Okay, okay, okay. So you have also done engineering, you know? Yes. You are already in service. You had done excise inspector job and also. Present to your food service plant. Yes, sir. Uh, where are you posted? Sir, I am undergoing department and training at directorate. Oh, okay. You are still in the training. Yes, sir. So you have qualified it second time. No? Yes, sir. Uh, good, good. There was already a public distribution system in place. Yes, sir. In Himachal and also in the country. So then, what was the necessity of uh, uh, bringing in NFSA, National Food Security Act? Sir, to make it more targeted, earlier there were divisions like uh, no doubt there were BPL and APL divisions, but after the introduction of targeted PDS, sir, mm-hmm. our main focus was to digitalize it and to focus on the people like priority household and antyodhya people who were not getting the benefits. If they were in BPL, but sir, there were some diversions. So to make the act more strict and to see that the benefits can be Really penetrated to the people that need it most, so that was the need to revamp the scheme. So we uh, introduced digital aspect in the NFSA, so that was one of the objectives. Good. So is right to food a fundamental right? Uh, sir, under Article Twenty One, this can be considered as a, a, a fundamental right, but sir, there are some limitations on it. Like mm-hmm. we can claim it to certain extent. Uh, like our government our department also provides fair average quality food and we cannot demand the quality of food to be like very good it should be fair average quality so in that sense it is fundamental right okay you are linking it with right to life no? yes sir mm-hmm. uh how far uh, is the drug problem in himachal pradesh So currently we are having around seventy thousand hundred seventy thousand seventy five thousand crore debt in Himachal. So sir, it is a huge problem seeing from the financial situation of the state, mm-hmm. and the debt has been cul- culminating over uh, one or two decades. Mm-hmm. So sir, this is a very huge problem for our finances, and uh, we are taking steps to deal with it. Like we have imposed water cess and milk cess in this budget. So, sir, and we are also diversifying our economy so that we can come out of this problem. And we have to see that how we will will be able to implement the our steps. Why are you uh, are attracted towards uh, this uh, life killing drugs? Actually, sir, there are many factors. First of all, is the geographical position of India and Himachal. If we see India, sir, then it is surrounded by, uh, it is lying bordering Pakistan. So. Golden Triangle and Golden Quadrilateral, both these uh, are uh, surrounding India. And if we see Himachal particularly, then uh, Himachal is bordered by Punjab, and mm-hmm. Punjab is bordered to Pakistan. So somewhere ISI and Pakistan 
uh, based terrorist organizations they are also interested in peddling drugs in, in india so that they can destroy the youth and other factors like sir there is anxiety among youth due to unemployment there is frustration uh, lack of job opportunities so these all factors are peer pressure also and uh, urge to try new things these all factors lead to lead youth into drugs uh, secondly sir we have also the this famous malana cream in kasol area and in kullu so many times foreigners also visit like kasol is called uh, mini israel so uh, many times sir uh, uh, due to foreigner influence also people mm-hmm. and youth try to look more cool and they get into this thing sir on one hand you know we are talking of uh, control of drugs but at the same time we are thinking of uh, legalizing this so uh, cannabis farming in himachal pradesh we are yes, contradicting itself so uh, how do you take it sir i think the basic rationale behind rationalizing the cannabis is for medicinal medicinal purposes so we can use it for the medicinal purposes and also sir we can see that it has many other important benefits like it can be used to make shoes and uh, for clothes and it can uh, lead to a uh, environment friendly lifestyle if we legalize it and sir secondly legalizing it will also uh, help in checking the drug abuse because then it can be legalized and we can check it like if there is any smuggling uh, the chances of smuggling will get reduced mm-hmm. so sir uh, the main thing will be how we will implement the policy the implementation issue will really tell us that whether it is advantageous for us or uh, it is not beneficial okay uh, you know nowadays we talk a lot about sustainable development goals hmm? sustainable ma'am sustainable development goals yes ma'am hmm. and uh, when you talk about the himachal pradesh how the himachal pradesh government is you know functioning and working on this achievement of this sustainable development goal what's the position of our state Uh, ma'am we have 17 sustainable development goals mm-hmm. and himachal is working in all of these goals except for goal number 13 that is life below water mm-hmm. since we are not a coastal state so that goal is not included in our state and ma'am uh, mostly our focus is on towards health education and uh, inclusive growth so we have developed as niti aayog has developed the sustainable development goals index for india mm-hmm. and the position of himachal is very good ma'am our uh, rank was second after kerala from last 2 3 years so we are doing good but if we see mam health indicators then certainly in women health we are lacking because uh, around 49% of the population of women in himachal they are anemic and but uh, if we see stunting and uh, wasting problem among children then uh, we are uh, working in the right direction and we have reduced the imr rates mmr rates and uh, mam uh, we are progressing in the right direction what are the government policies regarding to you know, tackling these issues especially about the you know the women health Yes, what are the important policies that you know HP government is just running those policies and programs? Uh, ma'am, we are focusing on education and health aspect of women because they are both things. If we educate women, then definitely their health is also uh, health will also improve. So we have introduced many scholarship schemes for women. And regarding health, ma'am, we have introduced on the basis of like Ayushman Bharat, we have Him Care scheme mm-hmm. for uh, that is for general population, but especially for the women. I'm just talking about that. Uh, Ma'am, government of India has introduced many schemes, and mm-hmm. our government is implementing that schemes like uh, Matru Bandhana Yojana, and for women especially who are about to be a child and who have uh, given birth to child, there is a plan for giving them folic acid tablets and multivitamins, uh, and we are also we have uh, uh, schemes for uh, crèche facility for women uh, who are having uh, small children. Mm-hmm. So these are some schemes, ma'am, and uh, I'm not able to recall many other schemes. This is just mentioned to the sustainable development goals. On the other hand, we talk about the good governance index also. Yes, ma'am. And what are the indicators of the good governance index, and where the position of our state is there? Uh, ma'am, we have introduced a good governance and good uh, district good governance index in Himachal on the lines of uh, uh, good governance index for India, mm-hmm. and we are ranking uh, various districts uh, on the basis of good governance, depending upon the various factors like the public service delivery. and the citizen charter how many services are there in the public service you know the rent act uh so i am not able to recall it okay. uh but we are increasing services and uh, we are digitalizing the governance system we have introduced many softwares like e district what is the position of our state uh, the latest index good governance index 
Uh, ma'am, it is improving. I am not able to remember the exact uh, rank. In the small, uh, you know, the, the different categories is there. Yes, the larger state, the smaller little states. You know, maybe yes, that category. I think, ma'am, it was first or second. I am not able to remember the exact, but it was. It had a good ranking, ma'am. Yeah. Anu, you are uh, already working in the food sales by the consumer affairs, and uh, we talk a lot about the you know Consumer Protection Act, yes, it is two thousand and nineteen. Yes, ma'am. How it's different from the previous act. Uh, ma'am, now the new provisions are there that makes it more stringent. Yes, ma'am. More efficient and you know more people oriented. Uh, now, ma'am, uh, we have made the act more stringent. Like earlier, uh, during advertisements, when some actors and actresses they used to endorse any product, and later on it was found that the product was not uh, meeting the standards, so there was no provision for penalty for them. But under the new act. They uh, they can be even charged and the even brands can, can be. Can you give some example where the you know fine was imposed? Um, I'm I'm not able to recall any example. Okay. Uh, but ma'am, this is one of the provisions, and ma'am, now uh, district courts and uh, we have uh, established separate uh, uh, courts at, at district level also to address the issues of consumer dispute and uh, appeal has been made also made easy uh, in the new act. Uh, these about are the, the online, you know, something provisions are also there. Yes, ma'am. What are those? Earlier on, there was no mention of online frauds and all those, mm -hmm. but now even online frauds can be uh, uh, brought under under the purview of the act, and the people who are doing online fraud they can also be charged under the, under the act, ma'am. Is there any some uh, uh, new institution or the body that has been formulated under this act that can you know take action on our behalf? Uh, so I am not able Central to. Central Consumer no. Production Authority. Have you heard about that? Yes, ma'am. I have heard about it. Yes, ma'am. The provision also about that. Okay. One thing more. Uh, you know, have you heard about the citizen charters? Yes, ma'am. What are those? Ma'am, citizen charter basically tells about the services that any institution or any department that entails, and it will give to the public. For example, if a person is visiting DC office, so he'll be able to know the. Uh, services that he can get from DC office just by seeing the citizen ch charter. It also tells about the time uh, in which these services ha have to be provided to the public, and if the services are not provided, then what are the penal provisions that are also enumerated in the citizen charter? Um, so it is basically a tool to improve the level of governance in the countries. Uh, you know, you are from the technical background. Hmm? Yes, ma'am. On the other hand, you know, you are aspiring to be administrative officers. What do you think that? What are the administrative skills inside you? Um, I think uh, I have a good uh, knack for uh, leadership, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I'm a good listener. Mm -hmm. I have uh, uh, I have a uh, zeal to serve the people of the uh, country. So these are some of the skills, ma'am. And I think uh, by the time I enter the services, more skills will be developed depending upon the situation and how I am required to deal with the system. What if you know that you know your uh, educational background, especially you are from the computer science engineering, is going to help you in the governance? Is it going to help? Ma'am, I'm a mechanical engineer, and mm -hmm. uh, yes, ma'am, definitely we are. Oh. Uh, we are, uh, ma'am, moving towards IT revolution, and now we are thinking to digitalize every aspect of the governance so that transparency can be improved. So definitely, ma'am, engineering, being a student of engineering background. Uh, I have a better knowledge as compared to someone from humanities that how the technical aspects of uh, any new tool or any software that has to be introduced in the government system that can be uh, uh, that is um, I I think I have a better awareness about those aspects. What do you feel that you know the responsibility of the administrative officer should be fixed? What's your perception about that? And I think the rules and responsibilities should be fixed, mm -hmm. and if he's not able to perform according to the rules, is there any mechanism in Himachal for that? Uh, How we can fix the accountability and responsibility of the administrative officers? Ma'am, by tracking the amount of work that he is doing and uh, amount of work that he is supposed to do, by comparing that thing uh, that can be done, ma'am, by and by seeing the rules and regulations that he is following or not, like civil services conduct rules are there. Then the code of conduct is there, and all those things, ma'am. Like there's a defined set procedure that how a sales servant needs to behave and how he needs to perform his duty. And there is a provision for ACR also, ma'am. Like seen as right ACRs, mm -hmm. so they give account of all of the work that they have done to their seniors. So that indicates the work that that they do. Okay, thank you. Okay. Let me know about the goods and services tax. Tax. How do you see GST as an implement? Is it fine, or you want some? 
चेंज इन यूनिट विद टाइम सो द बिगेस्ट एडवांटेज ऑफ जी एस टी एक्ट इज दैट इट हैज़ रिमूव द कैसकेडिंग इफेक्ट पहले देर वॉज अ बैड सिस्टम बट आफ्टर जी एस टी एक्ट द कैसकेडिंग इफेक्ट दैट देर वॉज अर्ली टैक्स ऑन टैक्स बट नाउ सर थ्रू आउट कंट्री देर इज़ अ कॉमन टैक्स ऑन पर्टिकुलर आइटम डिपेंडिंग अपॉन द स्लैब इन विच इट लाइज देर फाइव स्लैब्स सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल द बेस्ट बेनिफिट ऑफ द जी एस टी इज दैट नाउ थ्रू आउट द कंट्री एनी प्रोडक्ट विल बी चार्ज सेम and uh, earlier there was a issue of interstate transport well there was a octra duty that was levied and states used to levy taxes depending upon their convenience and it used to delay the transportation and logistics costs were also increased but due to gst these things have been minimized but the current issue uh, in the gst is that as the states are complaining that most of their taxation powers have been taken and only they are left with the vat that they can impose on petrol and liquor so these are some of the products that can really earn state good revenue so uh, states are saying that their uh, financial resources have been cut one of the issue is this and uh, second issue is that in gst council also states although they have uh, 66% of the share but any uh, matter that has to be passed that requires 75% of the voting so center has a virtual veto on any aspect so Uh, states again are ended with less powers in GST Act, so these are the some of the issues in GST. According to you, is it good that the states have less power, or is it okay with the administration uh, in future? How do you look at it? The dispersion or distribution between center and state should say state be given some powers or some uh, leave they do or all these or all, all these nuances should be settled with time. Uh, so states were given GST compensation says for five years. They were given this amount for five years after the imposition of GST Act. But uh, sir, as the five-year period was over in 2022, and now states are demanding that this period should be increased so that they can get tax uh, for some more time. But due to especially due to COVID losses, but uh, center is not ready to give this uh, to states. So no doubt, sir, the uh, revenue powers of states have been reduced. But sir, if we see the benefits of GST. then it's really very really difficult to also give uh, more leverage to states because if we start giving more powers to states then sometimes we have seen that these powers are misused so so we need to devise a different mechanism so that the, both the things can be balanced okay one of your hobbies is trekking yes sir so how would you make trekking safe as an officer when you come to the power as an officer so first thing should be that any person who wants to do an adega trek he should uh, register himself online or on a app so that the whole department who police team should be aware that a person or a, uh, some friends are going for a trek so first of all is registration is very mandatory mm-hmm. we are we see many times uh, like people they do not register and they just go on trek and sometimes when they are not able to come back and they face problems then it becomes difficult for the administrative teams to trace them and help them so registration is very much mandatory secondly the uh, there should be uh, training camps for people like people from punjab haryana they come for trekking and they just go on they sh- rather they should follow proper dress proper uh, uh, training and how to acclimatize them uh, for the mountains so they should be trained for uh, trekking this thing should also be done and they should be made aware that weather is also very important phenomena before undertaking any trek because sometimes weather turns immediately rainy or snowy then it becomes difficult so in advance they should be aware about the weather forecast for next 2 3 days and then they should be proper kit like proper clothes proper shoes uh, and a stick along with the uh, eating uh, material that should be there and uh, so these are the some of the steps and uh, we should also try to establish a dedicated institute in our state for uh, training and uh, imparting education regarding trekking to various people what are common treks in himachal pradesh can you enumerate some yes sir sir in kullu there is uh, khir ganga trek then vijli mahadev trek in mandi sir there is prashar trek and uh, uh, prashar trek and uh, uh, shikari devi trek then in shimla there is hatu trek then chordha trek on the borders of shimla and sirmaur then we can also consider sir local treks like uh, uh, jakhu and tar devi but these are they cannot be completely put in the category of trek uh, then there is a famous uh, karol trek in solan then thrun trek in uh, kangra in the in the hard trek in kangra so these are some of the treks okay so 
So if somebody faces uh, some uh, animal or some terror based contract, so can we can they be helped with the uh, by the administration or they would have to face it themselves? Or how do you think uh, they can be made safe by administration? Training is very important, sir. Like they should uh, be trained that in case of emergency how they have to deal because in that case sir, they will be the first responders and even if administration help comes it will be after like five six hours or it will take some time so they need to be first responders and if they are not able to take care of themselves it's very difficult to depend on administration for the immediate uh, relief so for that sir they have to be trained and they need to see that they are responsible for themselves. There should also be some medical kit along with all this. Yes, sir. So hopefully you can make some guidelines when you come into the services. Okay, Karthik, you come from a place called Arki. Okay, uh, tell me something, some historical importance of Arki. So Arki was the capital of Bagal state and Bagal state derived its name from the term Bag and it's a combination of Bag and Al. That means the land of Bag or leopards or tigers. And Arki, is, uh, Arki has derived its name from Ark, that is a place that used to receive lots of sunlight. And uh, historically, even the during the Anglo-Gorkha war, Arki was the capital of uh, Gorkhas when they were retreating after their defeat from the British. And it has also a very beautiful Arki fort. And it has very famous temples like Lutru Mahadev and Mutru Mahadev. So these are the, some of the aspects. Who, is, uh, who has the ownership of the fort currently? Sir, it is with the local rural only, but government also maintains the basic infrastructure of the, like it is giving money for the local admission is giving money, but symbolically the heritage rural is occupying the fort, sir. Okay. What are the famous fairs and festivals of this place? So, Sair festival is the one of the most important festival. There is a organization of uh, uh, resting and earlier there used to be bullfight but now it has been banned due to the guidelines of government and supreme court and uh, so it happens around the month of September. Uh, there is uh, people and barbers show mirror to each other then there is a, a organization of uh, there are swings and uh, jalebi is very famous for during the festival sir. This is one of the important fest like uh, other fests are just like that are celebrated in throughout Himachal like Holi, Diwali. But Sair festival is very important, sir. Okay. Uh, can you identify any two burning issues of the state? Yes, sir. Uh, so first of all is the drug problem that is that has been there from the last five, ten, or even more years. So that is one of the issue, drug menace. And secondly, sir, I think the emerging issue these days is the problem of uh, traffic that we see throughout the state, not state even in India also. And partly it is due to other factors also like influx of tourists and all the others. So it's not a standalone problem, sir. Many problems are interlinked and uh, uh, like there's a no watertight approach to solve these problems and we need to work in tandem like climate change. So do you think these two are uh, the burning issues in Himachal? So we can uh, categorize other issues also, but according I mean, to... What should, uh, which are the you know, priority wise we said. So you said drug abuse is the first. Second is traffic. Sir, but if we see priority wise, then we can also see the debt situation in Himachal, sir. Our uh, economy is not performing well. And seeing from that aspect, sir, economy is the backbone of uh, any country. So we need to strengthen our economy also. That can also be a very important issue, sir. How can we work on it? So we are di diversifying our economy and uh, we are focusing more on tourism, more on IT services, and we are trying to make Himachal and, uh, famous for horticulture and agriculture. So, uh, so we are uh, taking uh, like by, we are diversifying our economy. So, how we are focusing on tourism? So we have introduced many schemes like Nai Rahe Nai Manzil scheme, homestay scheme, Har Gaon Ki Kahani for rural tourism, uh, for adventure tourism also. And so we are also focusing on our uh, heritage uh, uh, tourism like uh, cities like Dharamshala and Shimla can be a very good heritage spots. So. We are uh, basically moving towards sustainable tourism so that the local people of state are also not disturbed by other people coming from other states. But unfortunately, sir, we are not that much successful in this because every now and then we see cases of uh, fights among tourists from Haryana and Punjab. So they are sometimes they are taking their guns with them. And uh, uh, like five, six months ago, there was an issue at Hatu when a uh, tourist from Haryana, he 
short term how much uh, revenue does this uh, tourism generate for the state so i'm not aware about the exact numbers but it contributes around 7.1% to our gdp so okay there was a report uh, some years ago that uh, the per capita expenditure of a tourist in himachal is 600 rupees yes sir so i don't think uh, it's a great idea to promote such tourism so how can we raise the standard of that so we are beautifying our uh, many cities like we have started smart city mission and amrut mission for the rejuvenation of our cities and we are also working towards uh, strengthening and uh, rejuvenating our old forts so do you think people will come to see a smart city as a tourist so definitely uh, in the last one century there has been a rise towards this mall culture and uh, smart cities will not uh, uh, attract tourists as such but when they come to suppose they are coming to shimla and they have good facilities that like they have rope ways they have public walks at the side of the roads so they will be more convenient here and indirectly this will help tourists if it's not attracting directly but it's also it's giving a way to them so that they can enjoy the facility other facilities so so to uh, enjoy a walk in the mall or a walkway and a ropeway does it make a city a smart city or in other words what is the concept of a smart city so smart city the basic concept is to uh, make easy the living of people in the city and for that so there are various various schemes working at the various uh, in various uh, parameters like we have introduced uh, working of offices have been made digital by of introducing e cabinet system e office system then there is a uh, uh, e district courts and e revenue him bhumi portal also so these are some of the portals that are uh, uh, making the uh, process of administration digital and for tourists we have introduced easy registration apps have been made so these on are on the administrative But side i think these facilities uh, are outside of the smart city also yes sir online registrations are outside of the smart city also uh, registration of tourists can be done outside of the smart city also so what does the smart city mean actually So it's a convergence of all the schemes. Like in smart city, no doubt these issues are outside, but these can also be incorporated. If there is convergence, then basically we need to have a good results. We don't see that whether it is coming from smart city or from other schemes. Basically, we are trying to improve the standard of the people living in the city and in the state. So anyhow, Karthik, just tell me, are you familiar with the monetary policy of the government? Yes, sir. who floats the monetary policy who frames the monetary policy for the government so reserve bank of india okay does monetary policy have impact on the employment scenario in the country yes sir it uh, indirectly impacts like rbi controls interest rates repo rates whenever there is inflation there is more flow of money so rbi increases the repo rate so that the flow can be controlled and sir it sets a chain uh, reaction when one thing is controlled whole of the economy is impacted so somewhere or other it also impacts the people of the country sir so what should rbi do to increase employment sir it should act according to the uh, uh, inflow of the money like if there is inflation then definitely the uh, in some amount of inflation is good but if inflation is more than 6% that is the set target of rbi <coughs> then it should increase the rate so that the money flow can be uh, reduced <coughs> and so for employment only monetary policy cannot be cannot influence the employment there needs to be many other schemes and factors that can uh, lead to employment of states sir karthik ke yes sir you have done mechanical engineering so what <coughs> persuaded you to pursue mechanical engineering and how this engineering will help you when you get into civil service sir when i was in class plus 1 that time i was confused that whether i should go for engineering or medical or for humanities mm -hmm. so at that time sir i uh, took uh, advice from my parents from my elders and then i decided that engineering should be best for me and at that time i took the decision for pursuing mechanical engineering and sir regarding your second question after pursuing mechanical engineering i think sir engineering opens the mind of a person as a whole it gives us uh, like vast dimensions like we are we study about various machines various uh, processes from small machines to big machines bridges and various other aspects so it opens the mind of a person 
and more than that sir for four years we live in hostels and we also learn management skills there how to how do we survive alone we are away from our parents so we grow as a person sir and applying the knowledge in administration i think sir currently we are working towards electric vehicles so automobile is a sector of mechanical engineering and we are also we've also work on tenders for, for construction purposes so all these things can be linked with mechanical engineering right so how a mechanical engineer can help in contributing to the goals of make in india so make in india is basically aimed at increasing the manufacturing base in a country and to increase the a share of manufacturing sector in the economy of a country so so being a mechanical engineer i am aware about the various uh, manufacturing processes and how different manufacturing processes are there in different industries so if i apply this knowledge in uh, administrative uh, sphere so then i can uh, like see that how different policies can be framed for different fields and one size all fits approach will not be applied there so in this way sir i think i'm more aware about uh, the manufacturing aspects of the country sir government of himachal pradesh is trying to make bring elect- like electric vehicles no so what yes, are sir. the issues that we might face or we are facing so the biggest issue is of the charging infrastructure like we are focusing a lot on electric vehicles but uh, the charging infrastructure part that has been lacking somewhere no doubt we are also giving subsidy for that uh, but one is the uh, charging infrastructure second is the sir uh, lithium ion batteries so we know the lithium is not a very abundant resource luckily uh, in last month only riyasi has discovered lots of lithium but that is also not pure and to purify that lithium we need to set a standard high profile industries in uh, india also so the uh, importance of lithium is there so for that we need to see that how we can uh, do uh, in, use lithium if not lithium that what are the substitutes for that so we are working on hydrogen also sir in uh, chamba we have uh, first plant of hydro clean hydrogen established in chamba okay there is a lithium triangle yes sir. where is it so it's in south america what are the countries so bolivia argentina and i'm not able to recall the third country sir okay yes, sir. Uh, your hobby is cycling <coughs> yes, what sir. type of cycle do you own so i have a mountain bike you have a mountain bike yes, if i want to buy a cycle what yes, what are the things that i should keep in my mind before buying it so first of all is the your height is the most important thing because there are different sizes of cycle like sir it starts with 16.5 inch the frame size then 17.5 18 and so on it has around 20 21 inches uh, currently i i have sir 18.5 inches cycle so the height and the physique of a person is very important so i'll guide a person regarding based on his physique and his uh, uh, height sir uh, how do you develop an interest in cycling how did you develop this interest and uh, while cycling you know what do you enjoy most so in himachal we have a very lush green uh, beautiful scenery and uh, i'm a i have i'm born in himachal so uh, this scenery really fascinates me so and if we do cycling sir then we are enjoying the scenery and we are also taking care of our health so there are dual benefits of cycling so that prompted me to undertake cycling sir okay so can you suggest some measures how we can make our cities cycle friendly for example in shimla actually sir in shimla it's uh, not that easy to uh, uh, take cycling culture to a new level because sir, we have a hilly terrain like we in chandigarh we have a very good cycling culture but in shimla sir uh, that is not that easy to develop because we have uh, highs and slopes are there so for that we need a electric bicycle more than a simple bicycle because uh, elderly people for them it's very difficult to climb up the slope using a cycle and secondly sir we have also very less uh, 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 play uh, road uh, width here so if we give a dedicated path to cycle then uh, the congestion problem of traffic that will also increase so for that sir uh, we need to study the models that how switzerland and countries like uh, belgium and they are doing for that we can study that sir okay traffic in siachen now we have deployed a female cadet uh, are you aware about it so is it not available okay so the government of india is trying to bring women in combat roles but yes, still sir. it is being opposed what are the reasons actually sir uh, our uh, mindset has been such that uh, there has been deep seated patriarchy since uh, 
long uh, ages so it's very difficult to change it overnight sir we have to bring in the behavioral changes by awareness campaigns by telling people that women can do all those roles in equally good amount as the men are doing so for that sir it will take some time and no doubt till the time people are not able to leave their this uh, patriarchal mindset they will women will always face some kind of hindrances a similar situation is happening in the if we say like parliament the women participation or if we see in our own state only women one yes, you know, women is there in vidhan sabha so what can be done to change this scenario so there was a proposal to bring in uh, a bill for uh, reservation of women in but that was not passed again due to this uh, opposition by male members so first of all i think uh, if uh, this kinds of bill keeps on failing that someone like supreme court has to take some step so that the government should enforce we can see in sir in panchayati raj system we have 33% and in states like himachal we have 50% reservation for women and it's working really good sir so we need to emulate this model at the uh, state as well as government levels and uh, sir again behavioral changes needs to be there and awareness should be created among people to see show them i have heard about blockchain technology yes sir i am not able to understand it as a layman for a layman please explain me what is this blockchain blockchain technology so in simple words blockchain technology is end to end encrypted technology in which sir there are a number of blocks that are connected uh, digitally and suppose we are making any financial transaction so that transaction will be loaded in one block and from that one block that will be uh, uh, that will transmit to all the blocks so for example if any person is trying to take out money or doing it by willful manners then it's very difficult for that person to do that because that is recorded in all of the those blocks and that is end to end encrypted so that is the basic sir it works on artificial intelligence and machine learning principles so these are the basic uh, about this blockchain if we select you know, what yes, change sir. would you like to bring Mr. sir recently i visited in tribal areas of kaza and i saw that people are really uh, interested in going there and but people of kaza they have lots of problems so if we see it in a bigger scale so tribal areas i think they are neglected no doubt we have introduced a single line administration but still sir we see that officers are really they they want to go to tribal areas and it's seen as punishment posting so i think i am young and uh, i don't have any problem in going in tribal areas i can serve the people there and that can also improve the level of governance there sir yeah it was really nice talking to you all of us thank you sir